Hi, David from Electric Teaching here, and we're going to try to determine the volume produced by rotating an area about an axis or a line. So about basically either the y-axis or the x-axis. And that's going to be key here um, because it's going to help us determine the answer to these two questions, which you always want to keep in mind when you're determining volumes rotated about linears. Um, is this a DX or a DY problem? And I'll be explaining this. And is this a disk or a washer problem? And that's also very important. There's also a method called the shell method, which I'll be covering in a little bit, uh, a little later in another video. So right now, let's take a look at an area bounded by a parabola up one, mama parabola, mama function parabola up one and the horizontal line y, g of x, or y equal 5. Okay, and it'll make sense why we're doing this on the interval of x equals 0 to 2. So if I go ahead and graph the parabola up, oops, didn't do that one very well. Let me try that again. Graphing sometimes a little bit tricky here. So if I graph this parabola correctly, it should go through the couple of key points here. I'm taking a look at the whole parabola graphed up one and then taking a look at y equal five which will look like this one two three four five so horizontal line horizontal line at five and I have hit the intersection point at the x value of two this is where the x value of two is okay and we're gonna look at this area bounded between zero and two xy's and the top function that's important when we get to washer because that's going to be the outside function okay and that's uh, the line equal five and also the bottom or the more inner function um, will be the um, uh, x squared plus one when we're rotating it around the x-axis so I'd like to do this problem I like to actually do this two different problems out of this I want to do first what it looks like to rotate it around the y-axis. If we were to take this object, this object, and rotate it around the y-axis first, what would it look like? What would it look like? If I was to rotate this around the y-axis, then what I would have is this bowl shape or this solid uh, um, uh, pointy, or uh, excuse me, rounded bottom curve. Uh, that would be rotated around. So let's try to illustrate that. The way you always want to do this is you want to first draw the symmetry of it on the other side. So I technically was looking at this area. And so the way I always teach students is to first draw the symmetry of that on the other side of the line you're rotating about. And then draw a circle that'll hold that in, maybe an elliptical, that'll give it a 3D illusion. So I'm going to pretend we're looking from the top and that we can see that if I rotate this area around, it would be a solid, almost acorn-looking shape, acorn-looking shape here. Okay? So another part of it, I always try to draw some extra circles here and then maybe dashed circle uh, dashed for the hidden part behind since I can see the top I can see the top this whole edge this whole green edge would be exposed but if I look at the smaller circles or ellipse uh, as I'm drawing them but circles if you're looking at the top section okay then uh, you could see there I wouldn't see the back edge just the front edge of this the smallest radius is where the radius is zero that's important to recognize the radius is zero and the biggest radius is where the radius is two so if I wanted to get the volume of this the first thing I want to recognize is this a DX or DY there's a shortcut to this whenever you're doing disk and washer and you rotate it or whatever axis you rotate it around that is technically then gonna be controlling your DX and DY but I want to give you the visual on why that's true what you're going to sum up is you're going to sum up stacked circles, stacked circles. And these circles are all going to have, these circles are all going to have a, technically, a width to them. 
and try to draw one of those widths right there. So you can see that this one in inside disk, this inside solid circle or disk, which is also going to be telling us what we're going to use, a disk method here, is got a width, has got a width, okay, that is a y thickness a y value thickness since the width on this is a hor a vertical line a vertical line that is in a sense a d y thickness a delta y if you've been pretty good about following um uh, calculus to this point and you think of Riemann sums and you think of all the rectangles and trapezoids that we have built trying to prove area built on widths that are dy or dx then this will make a little more sense shortcut is that if I rotate around around an axis and I'm doing disk and washer it will be the d by that value dy or dx but the visual to that to really understand it I think is important is that the thickness of all the circles that I'm stacking up and all the circles that I'm stacking up the infinite circles areas that I'm stacking up are all controlled by a dy thickness so I'm gonna stack up a bunch of circles they are gonna be pi r squared circles this is gonna be a disk method because it is solid so I'm gonna be stacking up a bunch of circles the circles have varying radius if this was a cylinder and I always start with this idea in my calc class when we go over, when we hit volumes if I was stacking up a cylinder a cylinder well they have the same exact area so I can simply say it's pi r squared stacked h high but in this case I am stacking up an infinite set an infinite set of areas that are all pi r squared but the r is changing based on how I'm moving through from uh, the integration as I move through from the values of 1 to the top value of 5 there so that is how you build it up a disk area stacked up infinite times to create a third dimension or a volume I know I'm being very explicit here, but I want to be sure you understand this before I start racing into just applying the formulas. I believe in understanding this uh, to, before we start doing the uh, algebra. So that's why the formula then will take pi out. Pi is a constant, and you'll often see this as your disk formula, where you have the r value inside there squared. But I'm going to substitute in that r value here in a second. So now let's get to the mechanics. We're going to be doing this dy. We can see we're stacking up 1 to 5. The r, I always tell my students to do it this way with disk and washer. The r is an x value. The r is an x value. The r is based on the curve of the parabola. The r is based on the curve of the parabola. So we have an r equal an x value based on the curve, and we need this dy. So I come back up to x squared plus 1, where I have the original function, y equals x squared plus 1, and I rewrite this solving for x. So I can get this based on a value of y. I will have a radius of an x value. So I'm going to subtract y, I'm going to subtract, excuse me, subtract 1 in square root, and technically you get plus or minus, but I'm only going to look at the right-hand side, so the positive, y minus 1. So this is the function that is the radius. I always have my students check it. The radius should be 2 when the y value is 5. Check, it is. The radius should be 0 down here, where there's no circle, when the, when the y value is at 1 check it works so now I know what this is y minus 1 alright let's just finish off the problem now we've got pi on the outside we've got to clean up this integration just a little bit we've got 1 to 5 the square of the square root leaves y minus 1 we now in want to integrate so we got 1 half y squared minus y running this from 1 to 5 with a multiplier of pi on the outside a multiplier of pi on the outside okay let's 
plug and chug the five and the subtract the plug and chug of the one. So what do we get now? We're going to get y uh, y uh, excuse me tw uh, excuse me, y at five. So that's five squared or twenty five over two. Okay, don't forget we have the pi on the outside still. Don't lose the pi. We often have to be very careful of that. Subtract off a y value of five. Then we're going to subtract the plug and chug of one. So I'm going to open up parentheses to be very careful of the negative of all this. So that's a one half at y is one minus a one. So one half minus a one, little scratch work here, is minus one half, and then minus the minus will be a plus one half a plus one half there. So this is equal to pi. Okay, This over here will be a total of plus one half across all that. Over here we got 25 minus 2, that's 12 and a half. 12 and a half minus 5 is 7 and a half. So 7 and a half minus, I think I'm off the screen there a little bit, let me bring that down. 7 and a half plus um, a half will then be a total value of 8. So we've got a total value of 8 pi. That is the area of this acorn shape rotated around. For the next video, I'm going to take this exact same area and rotate it around the x-axis. It's going to cause us to go dx, and it's going to cause us to use a washer method. I'm David from Electric Teaching. I hope that I have helped.